Okay, so in this learning video we're going to have a look at procedures. So whenever you're doing any coding, uh, basically you would want your program to be as organised as possible. Uh, the bigger the program, uh, the more organised it needs to be. If you just have a block of code uh, which goes over several pages, um, it's very difficult to spot errors, it's very difficult to make changes, it's very difficult for people to collaborate on your own program. So what programmers have done is they have uh, made use of, of procedures so that coding is a lot more manageable. Um, so if you consider the following couple of pictures, um, if you were being asked to do a research assignment, obviously you would want to pick the one on the right. All of those books are nice and organized. If you want to find um, a little bit of research, um, you probably will find um, your answers a lot quicker. If you go on the one on the left, it will take a long time. You're probably going to look through every single book until you actually find the bit of information that you want. So um, this example is showing you how speed and efficiency can be improved if you're um, a lot more organized. And it's exactly the same in programming. We want to be as efficient as possible. So procedures as it says here, when we start writing larger programs with more and more lines of code, finding errors and editing the code can become more and more difficult. We can get lost in hundreds of lines of code. And to overcome this, what we do as programmers is we make use of procedures. So let's just have a quick look at what a procedure is. It's a mini program or a subroutine. And it sits in the background and it waits to be called upon by the main part of the program. So if you were to consider this as being the main part of the program, which prints to the screen, welcome to the 10 times table, what we can do is instead of having a load of code which will actually produce the 10 times table in the main program, we could organize it in its own little procedure. So in the background, we could have another we could have a procedure which is called the times table. And that block of code will actually run when it's called upon. So if you can see here, we've got print, welcome to the times ta 10 times table, and we've got times table, which is calling upon this function here. When that is called upon, all of the code inside this function is run. So if you consider massive programs, if we organized our code like this, we could very quickly identify um, the, the procedure that perhaps um, has an error and make changes to it or if we wanted to improve a particular part of our program, we could kick, quickly go to that particular procedure and make those improvements instead of having everything um, inside the main program. Okay, so let's have a look at actually producing um, a procedure. So if I come out of there and go to PyScriptor. Okay, so to produce a procedure, what we do is we start by using the DEF um, statement and then we can give our procedure a name so let's call it times table those brackets are very very important later on when procedures actually um, take on values and return values it actually becomes a function at that point but th at that point those brackets will be very important but we'll ignore those for now so we've defined a, f a procedure called times table and we've got our colon if we go to the next line it must be indented so here I'm going to write my mini program just as I would um, any other so in my times table what I'm going to say is for x in range and I'm going to say 10 I'm going to print to the screen x multiplied by ten equals and then I'll finish off by saying something like um, ten times x. So that is my times table procedure run. Now if I was to save that and actually run it, let's see what happens. Go external run and absolutely nothing happens. You've got the program coming up and then it's going. That's because this procedure isn't actually called upon. It has not been asked to run at all. 
what we need to do is actually have a main part of our program like so and we need to call upon it so we will perhaps type in times table brackets and then input so that our program doesn't close so this here is our main program and this is calling upon this procedure so when the program starts it's going to start at this line here it's going to read that it's called upon a procedure and it's going to go back up to the top and it's going to find that procedure and it's going to run the code in it and when it finishes it's going to go back into the main program and carry on the next lines of code wherever they are so if I save that and run it now let's see what happens okay so you can see that it's called this procedure and the procedure is run and it's multiplied the different values of the loop by 10 giving us our answers so that there is how a procedure works and what we can do is we can make lots of different procedures so it might be that this is the 10 actually that doesn't like that does it let's say 10 times table it may be that we want to produce another procedure and this is going to be the 5 times table so I go 5 times table brackets colon and this time instead of doing the 10 times table it's obviously going to multiply it by 5 each time so I change that to a 5 so I can show you now that different procedures can be called at different times so here when I now run the program it's going to start at this point it's going to run this it's going to call upon this procedure 10 times table and it's going to run that code when that code is run it's going to go back into the main program and it's going to look at the next command. The next instruction is to do the five times table. So it's going to find that particular procedure and it's going to run that code. And when those two are done, it's simply going to wait for an input. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that it's done the 10 times table and then it started off with the five times table. I should have obviously changed that to a five to make that a lot more straightforward to understand. Let's see it now. There you go, that's a lot better. So we've got the 10 times table and the 5 times table. So it's a way to keep your main program nice and tidy, have a lot less code there, so that if you have any errors, you can go straight into the necessary procedure and make those changes. Or if you want to make improvements to parts of the program, then obviously you can go straight to those procedures and make those improvements. So that's the main reason for a procedure. So what would be quite nice in this main program is if I was to produce a little menu system so that if I pressed 1 the 10 times table um, procedure was called upon and if I press 2 the 5 times table procedure was called upon maybe you'd like to have a go at seeing if you can do that yourselves but that's ultimately a little lesson on procedures